uh, happy anniversary, uh, 20th anniversary to Judelle and Leah. Thank you. I know she came here by hoping, by hoping to get here. We appreciate her coming. Uh, so uh, we're thankful for her making it here for the service. You know, God is so good. You know, uh, before I come here, my wife got to change bandages and all that kind of stuff, you know. It's kind of crazy. I don't like surgeons. How many of y'all like surgeons? Okay. All right, you kind of like me. But I'm grateful that God is my healer. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I'm being healed every day. You know, uh, she laughs at me because I don't like to see a lot of blood. She said, man, you know. She said, I'll well, get used to it. You know, but, uh, you know, we, I don't know why she said that. I think I know. But anyway, we come home to the show. We don't get to see much of that, but anyway, God is good. So uh, I thank you for having a prayer in church. Each day we get better and better. Hallelujah. We have a lot of people to pray for, you know, joy, you know, we have people going under, undergoing some problems. I saw Mr. Smith. Uh, we have quite a few people undergoing some issues. So I want you to be praying for them. Uh, if you're sick today, we're ready to pray for that. Hallelujah. Because I want you to be healed. And I believe God is a healer. One of the things I'm used to is being spoiled because I normally get a miracle. Come on, sir. God said, well, you know, he didn't get a miracle. We had to go through this one. But the good news is I am the healer. So, hallelujah. Doctors can treat you, but God will heal you. Yes, sir. And I'm being healed every day, and so are you. So don't you be giving up on anything. Let us pray. What is it? Ladies meeting is Saturday. Men's meeting, we never know. So don't worry about men's meeting. We do it at the spur of the minute. We all just get together under a tree over there by the dream club. Or <laughs> we don't have no formality to it. So anyway, uh, let us pray. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus. There is none like you, Lord, in all the earth. We plead the blood of Jesus over this service. We bind every evil spirit, yes. every demonic power. We loose your anointing, your power, and your glory in this service. We pray for the revival that you bring in here, a revival we already feel, yes. that will touch the nations of the world. And we pray it begins in our hearts, O oh God, a living water is bubbling up out of us. Let us begin, Lord God, to preach your gospel to our community and be a light to the world around us. Father, we thank you, too, in Jesus' name, for family, friends, co-workers, neighbors, especially our church members and those of us who are here today, Lord. We pray for divine healing. I want you to pray for your healing. Father, we know that we have some sick among us, and we thank you that you would heal each one of them. Lord, you are a healer. You have always been a healer. We'll never give up on the fact that we know you are Jehovah Rapha. Oh, God, you will heal us right now. And God, we receive that healing. I want you to receive it in your heart, God. As the word goes forth, you said, Lord God, your word, send your word to heal us. Yes. Only speak the word, the centurion said, and my servant will be healed. Just speak a word of healing to us right now. Especially those who are not here too, Lord, we pray for them. Oh God, we thank you for Mrs. Taylor and Mr. Taylor. And oh God, we pray for Ms. Williams and Ms. Selders. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name, for Mr. Victor, who is here, and Mr. McGuffey, and, and we pray for Dear, that you touch her and heal her. We pray, Father, for Ms. Dennis, and we pray, Father, for Ms. Glendora, that you would touch her. The Claremont family, Father, touch them. Father, we pray to touch Mr. Smith, Ms. Baptiste, oh God, Mr. and Mrs. Cox. We pray for them. We pray, Father. Oh, Lord, for the Cox family, we pray for them. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name, oh, God. <clears throat> Dayton, Father, that you would touch him, heal him. We pray for Trevor, that you touch him, and Brother Daniel. Joy, Lord, touch her. And, Lord, God, we thank you, Father, for Janetta, that you touch her, Father. There's so many to pray for, for so many reasons. But we know that you will heal them. Miss Bobby, Father, we pray, Father, oh, God, for her. And God, y'all keep praying because it looks like I can't stop praying for people. Let's <laughs> just, just keep going there. Hallelujah. Oh, God. <clears throat> oh, Lord, we pray, Father, in Jesus' name, for each person in our church service today, that none would leave not feeling in their bodies the move of your hand, Father. 
We pray for Penny, that you touch her in Jesus' name. Oh God, Miss Ida May, we pray, Father, in Jesus' name. For Amelia, oh God, touch Mr. McGuffey again, Father, just to keep touching him. And Lord, we thank you. There is none like you. And we receive that healing. And God, we pray for our families. Pray for your family and friends who are sick. Lift them up. Father, we thank you for receiving our prayers this morning. We come together to hear your word in one accord. Bless this service, Lord, and move in a mighty way. Let no man be exalted. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. See, it's a shame when, you, when every, every, a lot of people are sick. But we're going to pray right on through it. Hallelujah. So don't you stop fighting the good fight. You know, one of the things that helped me is, of course, having a wife who, they ask me, do you have home health? You should have home health. I say, no, I got home health. It's called Lucinda. That's the only home health I had. So, I guess that's home health. That, was, that worked better than anything, doesn't it? Hallelujah. Hey, look, turn with me to uh, Psalm 116. And why are you thinking about going there? I want you to know when you call somebody, you expect, you know, you call him because your voice believes that they can hear you, right? You don't start calling people you don't think they can hear you, right? I mean, somebody, if I, if I was calling Vincent, I would say, I would think Vincent is in the, in, the, in the realm of my voice, in the area of my voice where he could hear it. I wouldn't call Vincent if he's at work. Right, Vincent? Because you wouldn't hear me, would you? So when you call God, the question is, do you know he hears you? He hears what you're saying. He's ready to answer you. Hallelujah. Today I want to talk to you about calling him. Because some of us, we get in all kinds of trials and troubles and we ask people to pray for us. We don't call him. I want you to learn, you know, I sometimes have to do it even in my sleep because I don't know how the devil gets away with it. But he almost makes you do the last thing you do is call God when you're in trouble. Today, I want you, even after the service, we're going to pray together. I want you to learn to call God. You know, each of us got some burden, some trouble, some problem, some issue, some healing, some deliverance, some salvation, something we need to hear from God about. I got good news for you. Men have been calling on God since the, since the time of Seth. They moved away from God so far from the fall when Seth was born, his son Enosh, or Enos, when he was born, they began to say, that's when men began to call upon God. Well, I think by that time, the anointing had pretty much worn off a lot. And, and, the, and the stories and the visions about God had probably faded away. See, the more we get away from God, the most unlikely we know how to call it. The closer we get, and the more trouble we get in, we know who to call. We get in a lot of trouble as we get away from God. But if you know how to call him, hallelujah, on, that word called me accosting the person, to call out, to encounter. So you, if you call him and you don't want him to show up, don't call him. But if you really want him to show up because you know he's your savior, he's your deliverer, he is your healer, then you better call him. Hallelujah. Yes. And you know, it's not that he's too busy. He, it's not that he got too much on his slate. But when you call him, you mean, I want to encounter with you, Father. I, I just, I don't want you to just watch over me and see me. I want you to come to me. Yes. I, I want you to come inside. I want you to speak to me. I, I want you to hear my cry. Yes. See, when I call him, I want him to know that I need him. Yes, sir. I'm not just going to call him because they say, hey, uh, Jesus. No, I'm going to call him because I need you. I, I know you're not too busy for any of us because you, 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 you love us all and see us all all the time. But when I call you, I want to call you to encounter you. Yes. See, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So some of us have that fear. That's a good fear. But we can't fear encountering him. We should love him enough. The Bible says perfect love casts out all fear. See, one thing I can tell you about calling, you're not going to call him if you're scared of him. 
You're not going to call him if you feel guilty, feel sinful. You're not going to call him if you don't understand his mercy. You're going to call him if you feel like he loves you and you're a child of God. Hallelujah. Hey, look, in Psalm 116, I've been getting it this week, so I'm sharing it with you. In verse 1, y'all with me? Yeah. Now, when I say call, I'm not talking about just using his name. I'm talking about because you know he can come. Yeah. See, some of y'all don't know him well enough to know he actually will come if you call him. Yeah. Calling is a hot thing. You could barely move your mouth on your sick bed, but if you can say his name, he'll hear you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. <laughs> Psalm 116 verse 1 says, I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. Y'all see that? Yeah. He heard my cry for mercy, because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. Now, I don't know about you, but if David can write that, the psalmist can write that, who encountered God many times, he must know something about the character of God. To say, I'm going to call you as long as I live, every day. Last week, we are talking about living is, living is believing. We live by believing. Well, when you get in a crisis because you believe in him, you're going to call him. Because you need an encounter with God. You need, you need something for him to do special for you. He's already watching over you. He already knows how to work things out for you. But see, this is a special situation, God. I, I'm not handling this that well. My Lord. This is a little much for me right now. Yes, sir. If you've ever been there. This is a problem. I, I can have people praying for me, but I, I really need you to come. I need yes, you sir. to come. Yes, sir. So I've had few people who were sick and family members and so forth say, no, I, I don't need no anybody to come. I need a certain pastor, a certain person to come. You know, you and I, we need Jesus to come. come on, come on. We need the Father to send the Spirit that we may actually encounter Him in our trial. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you call Him, you got to be ready for Him to come. People don't just speak out in the air. If I catch you out here walking around that levee calling for me, I'm going to say, that's enough. <laughs> you know, the old people say, dial him up. You don't need to do that. You don't need to dial him up. He knows your voice. He said, he said my sheep know mine. That's right. I guarantee you, he said, you know his. That's right. So when you call him, expect him. Don't just be saying, oh, Lord Jesus, I don't know if I'm going to get through this thing. No, call him because you need him. Yes, sir. Yes. Call him because you really want him. Yes, sir. And don't be afraid because he's coming. Yes, sir. Listen, there have been times when I called God when I was in this uh, thing here. <laughs> <laughs> and I would call him and I would ask him, send your angels in here because it's getting confusing up in here. And I just look around, there they are. Amen, amen. If you really open your eyes, you'll see them. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you don't have no stereotypes, then they're going to come here with blonde hair and gold streaks in their head and, and a halo flowing. <laughs> if you really need help from God, He's going to send it to you. Come on, sir. Hallelujah. What you need to stop doing is, is, is looking at Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci paintings. When it, God sent an angel, you don't know what he's going to look like. You just say, are oh, you from God or not? Come on, sir. That's all you need to know. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, we need to get rid of stereotypes and just call him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Call him for who he is because you know he's coming. Yeah. But if you're going to start calling God like some of y'all have been doing, I used to do it. You know, and the old people do it a lot. Have mercy. And, uh, you know, you, you just say it all the time. Well, he's not going to... Keep coming in and out. You know, he wants to hear that voice your children cry out in the My middle Lord. of the night. My, My daughter Shannon one time, me and Lucinda was after having Matthew, we didn't have any idea that we could have a child that was just so peaceful. Shannon used to sleep all night. One night, we heard this scream like we never heard. And you'll hear Lucinda say, whenever she says this, we're in a crisis, Murph. 
<laughs> I know what that means. Jump up, let's run. Uh -huh. <laughs> she screamed, and we was like, that's Shannon, that's, that's you know. Uh, Matthew might scream because he just had a dream that a bear was at the door. <laughs> but but Shannon, Shannon doesn't scream. So we knew something was wrong. See, because she she called out. Come on, man. Hallelujah. She screamed out. And it wasn't a scream I was used to. See, that's why you don't want God to get used to your call. Yes. You want to call him when you need him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you call him when you expect him to come. Yes, sir. You call him because you need him and you want to see him right here. I, I don't want to wait for nothing else, Lord. Come on, sir. I'm at a point now where only you can help me. Yes, sir. Shake it off. Shake it off. Just give me Jesus. My, my, my. I want you to learn how to call him because there is no other friend like him. Nobody's going to lay down their life for you like Jesus did. Yes, sir. Today, learn to call him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Samuel called on the name of the Lord. And one time, I'm just not, for the sake of time, we're not going to go through a lot of, we got a lot, but I'm not going to give it all today. Samuel called on the name of the Lord to show the people that they had asked for a king and they should not have. You people should not have asked for a king. I'm going to call God to show you you should because you ain't going to believe me. My Lord. So when thunder and rain comes in the weed season, you know God must have sent it. So I'm going to call him and if it rains and it's lightning and it's thunder, you know he's not pleased with what you did. My Lord. Samuel knew how to call him. And you can turn that later for time. We're going to move on. 1 Samuel 12, 16 through 18. Samuel called him. Sure enough, the rain came. Come on, sir. And the thunder came. Yes, sir. And the lightning came. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When a man of God called, when a woman of God calls God, even if it's to confirm something for you, call it. Call it. Call. Yes, sir. Say, Lord, I just need to know. This child I've been praying for, Lord, are you going to deliver him? Because it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen you do it yet. But I'm calling you now because I've been praying and praying. I just need some reassurance right now. Yes. I need some confirmation right now. Come on, sir. I need to know you're going to do it right now. Yes, sir. I can wait, but I got to know it. Mm -hmm. That's what Sam said. I got to confirm for you that you did a bad thing when you called for a king. When God has done all he has done for you. Some of us are like that. We want the world to help us when God's right there to help you. God had brought them out of Egypt, crossed them over the Red Sea, delivered them from enemies galore. But then when they crossed over, things were going well. They asked for a king. You don't look for the government. You don't look for nothing else. If he did it for you this far, he'll do it for you again. Make a lifelong calling of calling God. Everybody can't come to your rescue all the time. My Lord. But if you know the one who can come all the time. Come on, sir. Why don't you learn how to practice calling him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I used to think, oh, he must be too busy to deal with this. He is not too busy for the smallest things you go through. He cares for the littlest to the, to the biggest. He cares for the little child. He cares for the older lady, 110 years old. Come on, sir. He cares for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So today you need to know when I call him, I expect an encounter with him. I expect him to come. I've been worried a lot about some of my prayers. Lord, are you going to confirm this for me? Am I really going to see you deliver me? Because you see, he's in the deliverance business. Come on, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look, don't turn to all these scriptures. I got enough to, to, to keep you busy today. But in Elijah, there were the prophets of Baal. The whole nation had gone crazy. The Bible says very clearly in Psalm 12, <clears throat> If the vilest men are exalted, there's wickedness on every side. Yes. 
You make a vile man president, you say, well, it doesn't matter if you run women and take, do this and all of our money, it doesn't matter. But you know, the Bible says, if you exalt a vile man, there's going to be wickedness everywhere. You ain't going to be trusting nobody because everybody going to be lying. We can't lift the vileness. It's not for you to judge, but you can look at a fruit, the fruit of a tree. The Bible clearly tells you that, doesn't it? So if vile men are exalted, there's wickedness on every side. Well, Israel had gotten to the place where they had exalted Jezebel, and Jezebel hated prophets, and, and uh, Ahab, and so the prophets everywhere that were good, she had locked them up. They had run a hidden caves. But they had the prophets of Baal. And those prophets, they do all kinds of things to make wickedness happen. See, there was a vile woman and a vile man in office. Yes. So there was vileness everywhere. The people didn't call on the Lord anymore. My, my, my. It's wickedness everywhere. Yes. They didn't call the Lord no more. They didn't, they didn't call his name for help. I mean, who would think that God, the God, the father of Israel, God, the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, would be involved with all the mess that Israel had gotten in. No one thought that. It was violence everywhere in Israel. So here comes Elijah the prophet, who could be slain by this wicked woman at any time. He confronts the prophets of Baal in 1 Kings 18. And he brings all the people out. And he brings the people out to see. The prophets of Baal are jumping around trying to bring fire down to consume a sacrifice. Elijah was cool, as he knew that if I call my God, he's coming. Come on, sir. He let them cut up and scream and say their little prayers and <laughs> run around trying to break fire down. Come on, sir. And all he did was be cool. And I mean, he was so cool. He said, you know what? I'm not going to just show you my God can break fire. I'm going to bring water on this sacrifice. More than once. Yes, sir. I'm going to soak it with water. That's how confident I am that if I call him, he come. Yes, sir. With fire. I need him with fire. Yes. So he called down fire from heaven, and surely the Lord from heaven heard his cry, brought the fire down, and consumed the sacrifice. Yes, sir. Baal couldn't do that. And then the people began to call on the Lord. Yes, sir. Sometimes you got to show, excuse me, what God is a great God. If it's yours, call him. Yes, sir. If it's the world's God, whether it's money, whether it's a person, whether it's anything, show him your God is greater. Yes. And give God the glory. Yes. I want you to take the situation you got right now before this service is over and be determined, I'm going to call God. I'm going to call him. I've gone in my car sometimes when I had to call him. I bet you some of y'all did this. And I called him with a voice so loud, I thought the people in the cars passing me could hear me. <laughs> you ever did that? You should try it out. Roll the windows up and call him in your car. Come on, sir. Yes, sir. Scream his name out from your heart. Yes, sir. And say, Lord, I need you. Come on, sir. Call him. He's coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's not too far off, the scripture says. He's nearer than you think. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on, but sir. sometimes your heart got to cry out loud. Mm -hmm. To get it out, some of our hearts, you got to go deep and it come out like a gusher. That's it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just let it out. Say, let it out. Let it out. You got this trouble for too long. Why are you not calling on the Lord? Yeah. You call on every doctor, like the woman with the issue of blood that Lucinda may have talked about last week, if she did. But the woman with the issue of blood, she had gone to all the doctors, spent all her money in the Bible. Said, Why do we want you to know we do that? Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But they ain't doing no good. So there's a crowd around Jesus yeah. and a little stretch the poor woman got left. Yeah, 
She pressed. Yes. Oh my. She pressed from her heart. The only thing she had left was in here. Yeah. Yes, sir. She pressed through the crowd and she touched him. Come on, sir. Yeah. And he said, Who touched me? Because yeah. he knew something had flowed out. Come on, sir. I don't know if you've ever been in that kind of need, but you better know how to press for it. Come on, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You better know how to press for it because he can be sometimes the only one. Tell it. Tell it, man. Mom and daddy can't do it sometimes. Can't do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Or oh, amen. One or two. My, my, my. My daughter Sonia, she will call when that phone rang. I never go. Something will happen. Yes, sir. But she has learned with time yes, sir. as she's gone through trials. Mm -hmm. Mom and dad can't help me with everything oh, when yes, I need sir. She's a baby, but we can't always help her. Yes, sir. Daddy, what you gonna do? I can't do anything. Mm -hmm. But pray. But pray. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But she know how to put that music on. Mm -hmm. And call her. Yes, yes sir. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, do you know that he's waiting for you to call sometimes? But some don't turn here. Please, I'm sorry to keep saying that, but my notes are just full. Y'all gave me too much time to study. I didn't go to work last week. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Psalm 4, verse 1 through 3. You can turn there. Let's do that. Oh, boy. Y'all with me? Yeah. You know, I have learned my lesson. You know, sometimes instead of just letting things just get worse up and worse up, we need to call. We need to call. Some of us wait until the truck is about to just totally run over us before we come. Yes, sir. If I don't tell you nothing else, live, I call when you need it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're in the hospital and you just want to just call them out, there ain't nobody in the examination room with you, call them. Call them. Sometimes some of them want to hear you. You might be in a position for somebody else. Come on, to hear. Come on sir. Come on, sir. Teach. Psalm 4, verse 1. Answer me when I call to you. Now, that, I wouldn't talk to God like that, okay? But that's where it sounds. Answer me when I call to you, O oh, my righteous God. Now, he made up for that, didn't he? Yeah. Give me relief from my distress. Be merciful to me. Hear my prayer. How long, O oh men, will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that the Lord has set the godly for himself, set them apart for himself. The Lord will hear when I call to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I don't know about you. The Lord will hear when I call. Know that. Before you call him, don't waste time if you think he can't hear you. If it's Vincent out at work, don't call him. But if you're right over there next to you, call him. Hallelujah. Vincent, a lot of people are going to be calling you, brother. <laughs> but listen, you don't call people unless you expect them to hear you, right? But the good news about God, if you know he heard you, the scripture says, then you know he's going to do what you ask. Now, that's where your faith comes in. I called him. You know he heard you. Now do you know he's on an answer? Think about who God is. You love him. You called him. You don't think he will answer you? You don't know him. So if you call out of your heart, your father heard you. And your father will answer you. Now it's up to you were you listening? Because he heard and he's answering. Are you listening? When you call God, expect to hear him and listen for him. Hallelujah. Because you can be assured that he's coming. A call is an, an, a, it's, it's an encounter with God. You want him to get involved with something. He'll let it go just like it's gone. But if you call him, many other afflictions of the righteous, for the Lord delivers them from the law. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I hate to quote scripture and people don't believe. We live by believing in here. Hallelujah. I ain't just quoting scriptures. I believe. And God made me go through the same thing some of you go through to be sure I understand my brother's suffering. And I can identify with your pain. And that's not just saying that. That's because he lets me go through something. So I can know others are going through things. Now, I wish he would stop doing that. But I don't mind. Just the other day when I was in church Sunday, my wife said, don't you say nothing but about that wrist on your arm. That's all you can say. Don't you tell people you got that thing inside of you and all that kind of stuff. Because I wanted to go over to Mr. McGuff and show him what I had. I say, look what I got, brother. Look, feel that. It's all for me now. She said, don't you do that. And I just messed up. I did it today. <laughs> calling people. Yes. You promise you're going to call them? Mm -hmm. If you leave here today and you got some kind of trouble, you're sitting there fussing and arguing, mm -hmm. trying to figure your way out, cursing and carrying on, you need to put yourself on the side somewhere. Oh, no. mm -hmm. Get your peace back mm -hmm. and call God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to tell you something, because if you're going to sit there and fuss and argue, you done messed up your blessing already. Mm -hmm. You expect the devil to answer you? You get in trouble on the job. You really know you want to beat somebody. You see, I've been where you've been. You know, I used to tell people all the time, most people saw walking in the post offices and stuff with guns and shooting up people. I said, oh, well, I can understand that. Now, that's a shame to say it. <laughs> but, you know, you have some low-down people on the job sometimes, don't you? But you got to know who your boss really is. Hallelujah. You call on the Lord, hallelujah. You, you, you know, you just got to start thinking, you know what? He, he working it out for me, but I got to tell him I'm getting a little frustrated here. You need to call him. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Answer me when I call to you, oh my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, he's coming, people. He's coming. I promise you, if you're calling from your heart, you will hear his voice. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. I got so much. I'm going to um, I'm gonna have to end with a few scriptures and so we can have time to pray. But I want you to know he can save you. He can deliver you. He can revive you. And his love rebounds upon you. So when you're in trouble, you ever know what a rebound is? Bounces back to you. When you call him, his love bounces on you. Hallelujah. Listen, it's, it's important for you to know that he's so full of love, he will revive you. He not only will come and help you, he'll revive you. Turn with me to Psalm 80. And I don't know if I'm in the right place, but you deal with it. You know, I believe some of the most important people in the world are in this church. They may not know it yet, but they will. Because this revival can't happen without some very powerful people sitting in these pews, in these chairs. In Psalm 80, verse 18. Then, then we will not turn away from you Revive us, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God Almighty. Make your face shine upon us, that we may be saved. I don't know about you, but I have a lot of enemies. Some of them I don't even know. But I want you to be aware of this. If you know God, and if you call him, he not only will come, but he will restore whatever your enemy has stolen from you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to say, I need it right now. i got situations where I need it right now. I need you right now, Lord. Don't be so lazy. You can't get it out your heart. Now, if it can't come out your head, got to come out your heart, right? In Psalm 86. <clears throat> Verse 
Verse 5, you are forgiving and good, O Lord, rebounding in love to all who do what? Who call to you. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. In the day of my trouble, I will call to you, for you will answer me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are forgiving and good. Now, here's a good way for you to start off, because some of y'all think, I better not call God because I done done this, I did that. I don't know if he, I forgot to bring my tithe. I, I don't think he's going to hear me. No, he's not like people, okay? He's God. He's forgiving and good. All the time good. Rebounding in love to all who call to you. In other words, his love going to bounce right off of you if you call. You ever saw somebody who loves you a lot you're in trouble? They coming in, you can feel that love coming through the door. You can feel it coming. Yes, sir. You can call on the phone and say, Mr. Lucinda, I need you to help me. You can feel the love come on the phone. Mm -hmm. See, love bounces. It shows you it's all because of love somebody's doing this for you. Yes. God only answers you not because of anything but his love. That's because he loves you. And his love, he's going to fill you up when he comes. I just want to encounter him today. Some of us have trouble. But the good news I want you to know, if you're calling, he will save you. If you're calling, he will deliver you. Yes, sir. If you're calling, he will revive you. Yes, sir. If you're calling, his love will pour out on you. Oh, yes. Some of us say, well, why do I cry when he comes? Because you feel that love. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I feel that love. That's why I love reserve because our people here, they feel that love. Yes, sir. I've had people come into this church who are strangers. The first thing they say is, I felt the love when I came in here. Mm -hmm. See, when God is present, present you can feel his love. When he comes because you called him, don't you be afraid. Perfect love is coming out that door. And it's going to cast out all your fears. Hallelujah. When he comes, all you need to feel is his presence sometimes. Because you might be worried for nothing. You just need to call him. We just like children before him. Wait till the last minute. Yes. Y'all won't call nobody but your mom. <laughs> Most of us don't call our dad since your daddy was like mine. You didn't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't call mama. I'm just, yes. I got you, Vincent, right there. <laughs> Today, I want you to call your heaven. How many of y'all are children of God? You don't raise your hand and call, call me up here for salvation, but raise it. <laughs> I'm still my two little friends right there. They heard raise it when I say that. <laughs> we ought to pray with a call in our hearts. You can have a silent call, or you can scream, or you can get in your car and reserve it for the car. Or you can go home and reserve it for the closet. But I don't want you to just stay in trouble and never call them. Put the cell phone down. Apple can't help you. Put the computer down. Put the TV off. And call somebody who can help you. Oprah can't help you, baby. There's some things Oprah can't do but just counsel you out with all that crazy talk. I'm sorry. People like to talk their way out of trouble. I like to call my way out. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't need Ivanka, Alana, whatever her name. I need Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't need the dollar of nobody on no phone to tell me nothing. I need Jesus. Yes, sir. And I know how to get him if I got a heart cry. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. How many of y'all are too cool to call God? 
You're not going to tell me if you're all right. Well, this is the day. With the music playing, I'm going to just ask you quietly, if you want, in your home. You know that trouble you're in? That thing you think is out of your control? Been there a long time, some of us. With the same problem. With the same problem. When are you going to come? The Bible says stubbornness is as a sin of idolatry. You know why some people don't call? Because they got another God they call. Doctor God, money God, parent God, best friend God. Let's say, no, BF it, be it, whatever. Facebook God. Tell everybody your business. Come on, teach me. Oh, they tell you something. Tell them all your trouble. And they can't do nothing for you. And God's up there like, why don't they just come? I only count on a thousand hits. I'm everywhere in everything. And I love them with all that is in me. Why are you ready to call your father? Call your dad. He's rebounding in love. When he's sure, you feel it. You feel it like you never felt it before. Try that heart cry. And see it only here. And feel you with him. Almighty Father, these are your precious people that love you dearly. Oh God, they're your children. And you're a good, good father. I know you will hear them when they cry out for help. I need a heart cry, Lord. The trouble has come over their heads. They've been in it too long. Worried about it too long. Only you can help them right now. Today, they call. Y'all call. Just pray. Just call out your heart. Call it. Call your daddy. Don't look at me. I can't help you. Call your heavenly father. Call on Jesus. Deliver me. Deliver me. Save me. Release me from this bondage. Today, Lord, I just call on you. Heavenly Father, come quickly and save me. Heal me. In the name of Jesus Christ, your son, we pray. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody, when you leave today, I'm calling. I don't need a phone. I'm calling. Hallelujah. Y'all be blessed. In Jesus' name, and thank you for putting up with me. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs>